So you watch one of my vending machine videos and you see me pulling out stacks and stacks of money, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And you're like, yo, I wanna start a vending machine business too. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you how not to start a vending machine business. Tips and tricks on what not to do when you're starting a vending machine business. So let's get into the video, right? So the first thing you're not gonna do when starting a vending machine business is buying the vending machine before you have the location. I get text messages, DMs, TikTok messages, emails all the time. And people tell me, yo, Donald, I found this beautiful vending machine. It's only $1,000, it's $500. $700 has a car reader on it has everything I want it's a combo vending machine whatever it is and people are like should I buy this machine and the question I ask them all the time is do you have a location if you don't have the location don't buy the machine there's always gonna be another opportunity to buy the vending machine you don't have to feel pressed or you don't have to feel like oh my goodness if I don't buy this vending machine right now I'm never gonna find a vending machine like don't think like that even though I say this like all the time people are like why shouldn't I do that because you might think like oh why don't I buy the vending machine so like find the location I could just put the vending machine in the location people make it seem easy getting locations and then they actually go outside to try to find locations and then they realize that yo getting locations is super super hard because you're gonna get a lot of no's you're gonna get a lot of rejections a lot of people are gonna say they don't need your service and when they start doing that people are like whoa I have a five thousand dollar vending machine sitting in my driveway sitting in my backyard and I can't find a location for it so the best strategy to not put so much money down into it is to find the location before you find the vending machine also if you buy a snack vending machine and the location wants to drink vending machine then you just spent thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars buying that snack machine and the location wants to drink vending machine or vice versa or whatever right so you don't know what type of um, vending machine the location that you might have might want now you might buy the vending machine and the vending machine is too big to put in the location and you might need a smaller vending machine you might have bought two a snack and a drink vending machine and then you realize whoa that location is too small and they need a combo vending machines you guys see the problem I'm talking about? This is why I tell people, don't ever buy the vending machine before you have the location. You wanna make sure you have the location secured. I'm talking about secured, secured, secured. I'm talking about contracts in place and people are saying like, yo, we want this vending machine in here next week. We want this vending machine in here in two weeks, whatever it is, like that type of security. Not just, oh, we could put a vending machine. No, we signed a contract, everything is good. Everything is square and you're all good to go to put this vending machine in this location. Another thing, don't just buy vending machines without testing the vending machines. I bought this vending machine and it's still sitting here. You wanna make sure that you're testing all your machines the only reason this vending machine i could have fixed it but it cost so much money to fix that it's not even worth fixing this vending machine guys right i bought this vending machine for 300 dollars, but it's missing like all the pieces electrical wires are are gone that are cut this has a lot of problems but it, it got cold though right that's like the biggest problem that drink machines have like they don't get cold so i bought this vending machine thinking that oh i just need to put like 150 200 into this vending machine and it's gonna be good you got me <laughs> It, it wasn't the case, right? So what I ended up doing, I stripped the vending machine for parts. I took out the bill acceptor. That's the thing that the money goes through. I took out the condenser. That's the thing that makes it cold. And now I have $300 worth of parts. So I didn't fully lose. When you're buying vending machines, right? What not to do is just trust people and believe that everything works. Test everything. For example, make the person show you that the vending machine works, right? For a snack vending machine. You want to make sure that everything is working. You want to make sure that it's accepting quarters, nickels, dimes. You want to make sure that it's accepting dollar bills, $5 bills if it can. You want to make sure that all the coils are spinning. For a drink vending machine, you want to make sure that all the selections work. If it's a six stack vending machine, if it's a 32 vending machine, you want to make sure that all those selections work. You want to make sure that the vending machine gets cold. A big problem with drink vending machines is that they don't get cold. And people all the time on Facebook Marketplace are selling like drink vending machines and they're selling it to the ridiculously low. And they're saying, oh, the, the condenser doesn't work. That's all you have to fix. But understand, the condenser is probably one of the most expensive things to fix on a vending machine. Like when people ask me about repairs on a vending machine, everything on a vending machine you could probably fix. You could change out bill acceptors, you could change out coin mechs, you could change out motherboards and stuff like that. There's videos on YouTube that go in full detail on how to do these type of things. But the condenser, you're gonna actually need a vending machine repair person to come and to fix the vending machine. So make sure you're keeping that in mind. When, when someone's like, oh, you just need to fix the condenser, right? No matter how low the, the cost is, I would not buy a drink vending machine that I have to fix the condenser. No, wait, let me take that back. I wouldn't say never. Nine out of 10 times, I'm not buying a drink vending machine that doesn't have a bad condenser. Because usually when I'm buying machines, they have to go on locations, right? Next. What you're not gonna do when starting a vending machine business is just go and buy vending machine locations because somebody's selling it. Being that buying a vending machine location is the easiest way to get started, you have to understand that. If somebody's selling their location, eight times out of 10, they're not making a lot of money because why in the world would you sell a cash cow? Like, put that in your mind. If I'm making so much money off this location, 
why would I want to sell it to you? The only times I like to buy like vending machines on locations is when big companies are selling because they're like, oh, it's just another, I'm, I'm trying to get out the business. I've been in the business for 30 years. I made all my money. I don't need this. I don't need this money anymore. I'm ready to retire, go on vacation, spend time with my family. Those are the type of deals I'm looking for because those are the people that's just trying to get out the business. They're not trying to, to inflate the price on you. You go to Facebook Marketplace, and you got people that's selling um, vending machines with the locations for $10,000. That only make $200 a month. So you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence when it's coming to buying vending machines on location so you're not just gonna go cash in hand and be like here i'm ready to buy the location here's all my money if the vending machine has a card reader you could get bank statements and those bank statements could tell you how much the vending machine is actually generating every single month if the vending machine doesn't have any card readers now you're gonna have to do it like a couple extra steps you're gonna have to survey the location by yourself you're gonna have to go to the location see how the foot traffic is see if people are buying ask people around hey do people use this vending machine oh what's your favorite snack in this vending machine what would you want to see in this vending machine you want to ask people that like you want to make sure that people are actually using the machine last thing people are always in my comments and they always ask me like hey do you have to pay rent to place do you have to pay commission i'm here to tell you guys i do not pay any commission at any of my vending machine locations you know how i don't pay commission don't bring it up i know it sounds crazy to believe that i don't pay rent but it's true. I tell people when they ask me in the comments, I'm a service provider. I'm providing a service for you, right? That's how you're pitching to companies. Like, hey, there's no stores around your business. So that means when your employees get hungry, they might have to leave the building. If you want your employees to stay in the building, I can offer you a vending machine. And this vending machine can give them snacks and drinks when they're hungry to make them stay in the building longer. That means you're providing them a service. I know it might be hard for people to fathom it, but that's really the truth. Like I go and I pitch to companies like, hey, I'm a service provider. This is my service, this is my business, and I'm gonna help your company out. While helping your company, I'm also gonna help your customers out because your customers can benefit from me having this vending machine here. It's like a mini store in your company. So when you're going to pitch to these companies, don't bring up that you're gonna pay them commission. Don't even mention it unless they mention it. I understand if it's a high quality location and there's like a lot of foot traffic, it's a big factory and they might ask for commission, this is what you tell them. This, this is my favorite line. This is what I tell people when they're gonna, oh, do you have to pay commission? I say, hey, let me keep the vending machine here for 60 days. If the vending machine is making an adequate amount of money, we can rediscuss and we can talk about commission then because they have to understand that like the commission is eating into your profits, right? If you pay too much commission, it could eat into your profits and you probably won't be profitable in the vending machine business. And when those 60 days are up and if you're satisfied, you get offered five, 10%, 10% at the highest, depending on how much it's making. If it's a very, very good location and they want like 30%, if it's amazing, make it a win-win for both of you guys. If it's a lot of foot traffic, I've seen people that give like 30%, even 50% if the location's doing like crazy astronomical numbers. It only makes sense. People talk about electricity. Vending machines don't take as much electricity as people may think. So they might be thinking, oh my goodness, it's on 24-7. A lot of vending machines, like they, they literally like shut down. Like they go into like energy saving mode. So keep that in mind. Like a vending machine is running 24 hours, but it's not really running 24 hours. If you understand what I'm saying. And the last thing I want to mention before I get off this video, I'm tired of grown men coming in my comments and trying to put fear into people. Trying to put fear into the hearts of my of my subscribers like oh my goodness vending machine business is so hard and you're not profitable and you can't make money and you have to pay for locations and you can't find a location yo if you're scared just say that if you don't want to invest just say that when you get into this vending machine business it's gonna be hard if something is worthwhile in life it's most likely gonna be hard you feel me you just have to choose your heart like being rich is hard and being poor is hard like pick which hard that you want right you're gonna get a lot of no's for me a no no just means the next opportunity and there's some people that they, they try they, they they try for a few weeks they get a couple of no's and they say oh my goodness it wasn't working for me go harder if you need to call 300 businesses and you need to to go and knock on that many doors you need to hand out your business card that's what you're gonna have to do to win that's what you're gonna have to do to get your first location if you're gonna have to tell every one of your family members if you're gonna have to post a thousand instagram videos to get your name out there that you're in the vending machine business that's what you're gonna have to do that you feel me just say you scared just say you're broke just say you don't want to make the money just say you don't want to work hard just say that if you guys got this far to the video you feel me i want you to put i'm not scared in the comments but i'm not scared in the comments you feel me speak into existence you're not scared of rejection you're not scared of getting told no. You're not scared of anything that life has to throw on you. You feel me? God is too big for my goals to be too small. Hopefully everyone has a great day. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Peace.